Hello, dear ones. It's it's Alice. Um, what I've noticed lately is a phase that, that Earth is going through and humankind is going through, where the people whose whose hearts heart chakras, you know, our heart chakra, not the high heart, but but the middle heart chakra, is negatively aspected. Uh, those people are are it just through a quality of their electromagnetics are like um, sort of glomming onto my heart and uh, there's like an electromagnetic attraction that stops the action of my heart because their heart uh, energy is uh, like reversely attracted to mine and everything kind of grinds to a halt and the clear audience chatter that I hear uh, is that that these people in their minds feel that they have not enough love and not enough like uh, vital force and energy and that they need to to they feel inevitably drawn to my heart chakra to try to like get the love that um, that they need okay and now I've traced this to several uh, several different, I've looked at it in several different ways. And one is um, just this electromagnetic feature that we've been talking about um, where the energy of their heart is, is slightly uh, negative and the energy of a heart that's uh, just open, freely open, it doesn't have a charge. And then the the, um, the energy of their for heart is therefore attracted, like a magnet is attracted to non-reactive steel, and um, and so this can cause fear in the heart of the person who's like um, besieged by the the hearts of the. How did Krishna Das say it? Uh, My foolish heart, when will you learn? And so, when we have that attitude that our hearts, you know, uh, will never get enough love and, uh, and are incapable of, of being loved, then, then we're drawn outside of our own magnificent um, uh, souls to, to try to find the object of our desire elsewhere. And, of course, that will never be satisfactory for us, for the source of the spark of divine is within us. That's where we find all that, that we need. That's where we find all that we are. The truth of what we are is within our own heart. There God dwells in us. There grace is and lies in us. So we have to, we have to bring ourselves back to, to our own hearts and, and feel our hearts in our hearts positive emotions such as gratitude and appreciation with small things that we encounter all day long we can we can keep our hearts open in that way and when our heart chakra is open and moving flowing freely we don't feel the need to find things outside of ourselves to 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 satisfy us we are content within ourselves you know then we can stand steadily in a path with, with, with Christ's compassion. But now, that's the goal, right? And in the meantime, what I'm noticing is that uh, it doesn't take a lot for me to be reacting with other people or feeling a sensation in our bo my body that causes my heart chakra to close up a little bit. So... So now what I'm concentrating on as I walk and when I'm with people is I'm concentrating on relaxing my chest muscles and, and relaxing my heart when I feel that tightening up because of some external stimulus, you know. So that way I can be sure that my heart is always open. open. Um, now I want to talk a little more about people who feel uh, that attraction, kind of attraction to other people, uh, like um, 
there's not enough love and I've got to get love from other people. Those, those kinds of feelings that we have sometimes. Um, I think it's a little like, uh, you know that club called Alcoholics Anonymous? And uh, it's like an addiction and a, uh, like a way of thought that, that we can't break free of. It's a habit, a mental habit to think that we don't have enough love within us. And, and so what happens is that when we keep cycling this, this secret current of thought through our, our deep uh, subconscious mind is that we are constantly trying to find people in our lives like uh, Alcoholics Anonymous talks about enablers. These are people who will allow us to perpetuate this uh, insufficient, this, this habit that's really um, insufficient to the truth of the situation. So enablers, what they do is they, they say, um, oh my gosh, you poor thing, let me help you, you know, like that. And instead of saying, um, you and all human beings have the free will to become and who they truly are and to, to, to realize the majesty of their souls, you know. We, instead, we, we, we validate the chains on somebody else. We validate the fact that they have a habit, a subconscious habit. So, so, so then we find ourselves constantly drawn into their lives to fix things for them, to give them money, to give them praise, to give them love, and because of their own like lack of clearing in the heart chakra, some little snag in there, makes them always respond to love, a loving like a clairaudient lo uh, loving feeling or uh, uh, um, a physical in the physical presence of that person. They will be constantly trying to s to shut down the enabler's heart chakra, constantly trying to belittle them constantly trying to make their self-esteem suffer. Um, I think that the reason for this is that um, when the enabler's heart chakra is shut down, it's, it's more like their heart chakra is. And so they feel more at home with a person whose heart is not functioning well, you know. So as empathetic people, when we're in the presence of a person with that kind of mental habit, habit uh, the the view of insufficiently have of an insufficiency of love, um, we have to keep our hearts always open, but centered well within ourselves, you know, and and so. Let's see. I think there was one other thing, one or two other things, um, to do with that. Let me think for a moment. Yeah, so, so the thing is, um, from a multidimensional perspective, um, whatever we see as like a distortion of the emotional body of somebody else uh, is likely uh, a, um, just an indication of the distortion of the emotional body of everybody on earth. Um, n not exactly the same distortion, but perhaps very extensive distortions in everyone here due to the density of matter. Um, as we're rising through this process, we're becoming, we're receiving more, we're able to hold in our bodies of light and in our emotional bodies and in our uh, DNA more um, depth of light, you know, so that so that the kinds of um, information that had been left out just because there was no room in our mental, emotional, spiritual complex to, to place that information when we descended into the third dimension. That kind of information insufficiency is now being eliminated by the downloads of light that we're receiving from the central galaxy. Since 2012, we've, uh, the end of, near the end of 2012, we've, we've started to receive in more and more light. So 
steadily and naturally our emotional bodies will be returning to a state of fullness and, and our uh, bodies of light. Um, but they are doing so in conjunction with um, changes that are taking place in all of our dimensions. And, and we have expressions of self in all of our dimensions. Yet, most of us are unable to, so far, to communicate with those expressions. On the other hand, those expressions are more than capable of communicating with us. So, we have to have the sense of mind, the perspective of self, uh, multi-dimensional self, to, to call upon our expressions of self that are in other dimensions. Now you can call this your celestial team. Uh, if you're an Advaita kind of person, that'll make sense, that, that you're just talking to your higher selves, you know, and they are cord because of their greater understanding of the total situation. They are able to coordinate and speed up our ascension into a greater understanding and clarity. Um, so, so now to, to go back to um, these people that are that are like holding on to other people, like kind of wham, holding on to other people. Um, these people don't understand. Okay, there was a time, 150,000 years, some say during which there was no other succor, there was no other help for us than to, to depend upon each other. And that was not a huge help because of the soul wounding we had, we had all experienced. Okay, So it was more like um, the comfort of knowing that some other being was there than actually being able to receive help from other people. Um, um, because we, we, were, we were all deficient in programming, you see, because of the density. So, and we still are, okay? So relationships that are formed during this, this, in this density are necessarily lacking in that um, ecstatic joy that we will experience in our relationships in 5D, in the fifth, in the fifth dimension. Um, and that is something that we have to realize has changed, okay? We can now relate to our celestial teams. We can now relate to our higher expressions of, of, of self. And that is where the help lies. The help does not lie in other people right now. Okay? So, so for those that haven't realized this yet, that are still quite naturally holding on to other people, we need to let them go. The more separate and the more alone they feel, the more uh, they will feel impelled to look for help where help truly is. All right. That's my thought about this. Is there's a lot more to be discovered about this, I'm certain of that, because it seems so all-pervasive, this aspect of, of not having enough love and feeling separate and, and uh, trying to, to heal that perception by holding other people in like a kind of a and draining other people's energy, this notion that, that we have to get it from other people, this energy of vital force, and, and the notion that we can, can control large numbers of people with our minds, that's purely uh, antithetical to the, um, the laws of Earth, of, of free will and love. Um, so it's just a misunderstanding that has happened um, because of the density here. Now, here's something that I found out just today. I was walking in the mountains. I don't know if you can see the mountains. I was walking in the mountains, pretty cool. And, um, and I, f I sat down on my favorite rock to meditate. And I began to feel that my heart was like closing up. And lately, whenever my heart starts to open, I feel like uh, this, um, it's like, um, thorns tearing at my heart and pulling it closed again. It hurts a little actually. And so I tried taking a few fingers tips from one hand and placing them, I hope you can see it, right there on my heart chakra. Okay, and, and so lightly on my heart chakra. And what I felt when I did that, um, first I heard clairaudiently some people 
a man and a woman and some other people say, uh, she was right here with me and now she's gone. Where is she anyway? And then um, uh, I heard uh, like a little little child saying, there's all the love you're, you'll ever need right here, right? But And I could feel the electromagnetics of my heart changing. I could feel um, uh, like... A, the, the kind of a claw feeling went away and and it was like a relief to my heart, a relaxation and a joy came in. So I'd like to suggest just this mudra, okay? This mudra, trying this mudra out, place three fingertips of a hand lightly on your heart chakra while meditating and see how how the energetics change, okay? I think there's going to be quite a bit more on this topic, either from me or from other channels. So uh, I'll leave it right there right now. I'll wish you well with your heart explorations, and I'll sign off. Take care. Love you all lots. Take care. <laughs>